Yo, what's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to show you five reasons why industry producers beats sound better than your beats. Hopefully after you're done watching this one, this will take your production to the next level. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into the video. So my first tip for producers, tune your 808s. No matter how many times we've heard this before, it's still something that I've run into and seen a lot of producers beats. So I'm gonna show you how I tune my 808s. Um, so I got this beat already pulled up here. Now something that I can do is there's a piano bass and a synth bass in this beat. So here's the piano bass, here's the synth bass. So if I pull up the piano bass, you can go to edit and audio editor, convert score, dump the piano roll, and then you go in here and it shows the bass notes already. So I got my 808 already laid out, but you saw if I pitch this up, it's the same exact bass notes of my 808 just this section here, but you can hear when the note changes. So that's an easy way to get the bass notes or the 808 in key. Another easy way that you can do it is if you bring the synth section, let's say you didn't have the piano and you just had the synth bass, and then you play the 808 and you pitch it up just so to um, basses aren't playing at the same time and then you bring the synth bass in with the 808 so you play it and make sure it's the same notes so those are two simple ways that I use to tune my 808s um, yeah that's the biggest thing whenever i hear 808s out of tune it just throws the beat off and it just yeah i don't want to hear that in 2023 at all for my second tip is the 808s not being loud enough so a lot of times producers are worried about clipping in their 808s only thing you got to do on that is put a soft clipper on your master and then you won't have to worry about clipping at all in my beats on the actual channel that the 808's on the 808 clips but because of the soft clipper if you go to the master the beat is not clipping so i can turn my 808 up a little bit more and it sounds better because i have the soft clipper on my master i got the velocity up my 808's boosted in here so it's turned up as much as possible it's hitting past zero but because of that soft clipper it still sounds good tip number three is your beats are too boring so what we hear a lot of times is keep things simple what's the hard thing is figuring out how to keep things simple but keep things interesting at the same time so here in this beat I use two different 808s. I got a kick pattern. I go from a clap and snare to only a clap on a section. Um, I blend a clap and snare together. I got an open hat coming in and out, got some risers. So it's simple, but it, everything's effective. Um, everything has a purpose in the mix. Everything is used for a reason. Um, so nothing's boring. I've got 808 rolls going on here um, at the end. I don't want to get too crazy with them because um, I want to have space for an artist, but I do have some 808 rolls here. I got the bass notes changing around, so it's not the same thing every single time, which that does work too if you use it the right way. But I've got, here's one 808. And then here's another that goes. So make sure you're switching things up, keeping things interesting, and that will keep people listening to your beats. My fourth tip is you have too much going on in your beats. So as I was showing on this beat here, the 808, it's not too crazy. I'll play it for you here. So 
so I only have a roll here at the end. Um, everything else I look at as um, I leave space for the artist. So here that leaves a pocket for the artist whenever he leaves space here. There's some space here. That's a pocket for an artist here, here, because the artist's voice is an instrument as well. If I was doing something like this, then it just... That's almost too much going on. That's that would give me a headache if I heard 808 patterns like that all day. So you want to leave space um, because even you're leaving space. So it makes things hit harder, if that makes sense, because the listener doesn't expect or doesn't know as much when the 808 coming in. If you're just hitting as many times as you can, it gets old. But if you bring it in and out, leave space for the 808, that keeps things more interesting. You don't overdo it. Um, and yeah, it's solid. Everything else is kind of simple. Just nothing's too crazy on the hi-hat. I do have some rolls, but rolls aren't that crazy. It's basically a two-step high pattern with rolls here and there. But you don't want to have too many rolls because then that would distract the artist. Something I heard the artists do is whenever they're listening to a beat, they pay attention to the hi-hat pattern and that helps them with their flow. So simple hi-hat patterns. That's why you hear in a lot of radio hits, just a regular two-step because artists probably like that basic hi-hat pattern so it's easier for them to flow because that's how they're paying attention whenever they're in the booth and making a song and step five to why industry producers beats sound better than your beats is you just simply haven't put the time in yet so music production is something that i've worked on for the past six six and a half years and it's something i've done every single day I can tell you from the first day I started, I've come miles ahead from now since then. And I feel like a lot of producers now want to skip steps and maybe they've only been producing for three months, six months. And they're like, why am I not getting placements? Why is this not happening? But you have to learn to be persistently patient. Um, persistent as in you're working every single day you're grinding doing every single thing you can but patient in the process just knowing if you do this thing every single day you're gonna get better no matter what if you do it every single day on day one compared to day 300 you're gonna look back at day one and it's like man i've come such a long way since then and that can really be applied to anything, whether it's working out, making music, whatever it is, um, just stay persistent and stay patient at the same time. Put your hours in, get those 10,000 10, hours, and then yeah, eventually your beats will sound as good as industry producers. But yeah, that's all the tips I got for today. I hope that helps. Show some guidance into why your beats maybe don't hit as hard as industry producers beats. Make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be dropping more kits and tutorials in the near future. As far as this one, that is everything. I'm out. I will see y'all in the next one.